Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and today I'm going to show you how to build a lumberjack's house in Minecraft. Before we start doing any building, if you're making this in survival, you're going to want to check out the description down below for a full resource list of all of the items that we're going to be using to do this build. So here is the size and layout of the building. The orange blocks mark where we're going to be placing our pillars in using some stripped dark oak logs and the polished andesite blocks are just so you can count how many blocks are between each of them. So once you've got all of those placed down on where the orange blocks are marked out you can then go ahead and place three more stripped dark oak logs on top of them so all of your pillars are four blocks high. Now you can go ahead and grab your dark oak planks, stairs and slabs and we're going to come to the front of the house here. So this is the layout of the logs. We're coming to this five wide section at the front, just where we have these two pillars next to each other. So on the top of both of those pillars on the outside, we're going to have two upside down stairs with a regular stair off the back of it, just like that. And then we're pretty much just going to repeat that pattern all the way until we eventually get to the top where they meet in the middle. So just staircasing your way up until you end up with something like this where in the center we can have an upside down stair like that a regular stair on top and then another upside down one on top of that one and then we can just drop down to the bottom upside down stair and have a line of five slabs going across from one side to the other now we can go ahead and move around to the right hand side of the build and come to this three wide section and we're going to start off the same as what we did before with two upside down stairs and a regular one coming off of it on the top of the pillars we're then going to have a full plank on top of those with a stair on top of them and then pretty much just do with the same as what we've done at the front staircasing our way up until they meet in the middle where we can have an upside down stair and then a regular one and another upside down so this is what the smaller three side looks like we can then copy both of these over to two other sections of the build so the three wide section is going to be copied over to this three wide section virtually opposite I'll just mark them with two stairs right there and the five wide section can be copied round to the back once again virtually opposite the front. As for completing the bottom part of the roof outline, it's actually pretty easy. We basically just want to add in a bunch of stairs connecting them from one side to the other. So for this section, that's what you need to do. A little bit short around this side, we're just going to have one stair here, then three more going across. As for this corner, virtually the same again, except a tiny bit shorter. And then this very simple corner over here, <laughs> we just need one in the corner of the two blocks. So that's all you need to do. And all you need to do for the top part of the roof outline is add in a line of slabs from one stair to the other on the five block wide sections, so from the front to the back. And then we're basically just going to conjoin on the three wided sections, adding another line of slabs onto the original line of slabs. So it should look like this. So right now, if you can't tell, I'm facing the front of the build and we're actually going to come up to this long line of slabs connecting to the three wide section over here and we're going to count across one, two, three and on the fourth block here, we're going to put in another slab coming forward, then a dark oak trap door in front of it. Mine look a little bit different, but yours should still be pretty similar. We're then going to have an upside down dark oak stair underneath it, then two more regular ones just on the side of it like that. So it should be looking like this. And underneath those two stairs, we're going to have two strip dark oak logs just like that. A spruce stair in the middle with an oak trap door on top of it as a little bit of a window and then just some decorative spruce buttons either side of it. We can then just hop up onto this thing we've just made and come round to the back and what we're going to do is place down a brick block right there. So one block to the side round the back of what we've just started making over here. So we're going to have a brick block there then one more below it just like that. A stair on top facing towards the three wide section, then an upside down stair, then another full block and we're just going to build a chimney on top of this thing or a campfire chimney topper, whatever you want to call this. Basically a campfire surrounded with spruce trap doors so we can get a smoking chimney. Now it's time to fill the roof in. And we're going to do that using mostly spruce stairs and spruce planks. In fact, that's entirely what it's made out of. So we're going to start off here at the front of the build next to the little thing we've just built. To the right hand side of it, we're going to have two spruce planks, two spruce stairs above it, and then three more above that. And it should connect to the dark oak stair just like so. 
We can then come around to this side over here where we're going to have three stairs with three more just above it and then three more again. On this second row, we're just going to have one curved round to the side like that. So just make sure yours does curve round and doesn't look like this. Otherwise, you're going to have something poking through here eventually, which we don't want. So just make sure it's curved round to the side face towards the chimney when you place it. But as for the top row here, we're going to have two more down like that. One more facing the chimney and then one connecting to the dark oak stair. Now moving on to this section, to the left of what we've made over here, we're going to start off by having two spruce planks next to the dark oak plank, and then we're going to have a spruce stair going into the side of them, and then pretty much is just connecting up the dark oak stairs with a bunch of spruce stairs in between them. It's fairly self-explanatory, but just do as I'm doing here. For the most part, try not to curve your stairs like I just did there, but you just want to make it nice and smooth and fill it in completely. Hello, wandering trader. You're going to be really annoying, aren't you? And again, moving on round to the left-hand side over here, we're going to start off with two more spruce planks next to the dark oak planks, and then a line of three stairs, just like that. And just the same as what we've done before, connecting all the stairs using some spruce stairs. And you should eventually, for this section of the roof, once I get all of these placed down, have something looking like this. And for the final side where we have our chimney built, we're going to start off with a line of five spruce planks starting at the dark oak plank with a single stair next to this one, then a bunch of stairs on top of the planks and then two more here to connect to the dark oak stair and then the top one, I mean just connect the stairs, admittedly there is a campfire in the way or a chimney I should say, not a campfire, so we just need to skip this block and continue on around this side and we eventually get something whoops looking <laughs> like this so that is the roof entirely done now we can start on filling in all of the walls and we're going to begin at the front of the house here on this five wide section and we're just going to hop inside grab our barrels and we're going to have one two three four five and six barrels placed upside down like that and then another two in the center here just make sure they're all facing the same way and you don't have something like this for example as that would kind of ruin the effect out the front which looks like this and then what you can do is just add in a line of spruce trap doors underneath all of those barrels this section by the way underneath the barrels is going to be staying open there's going to be a little work area built inside of here so we'll come back to this later we can now move around to this side where the entranceway is going to be going. So a lot of the walls here are going to be built out of combination of stone brick, stone, andesite and crack stone bricks but just for the simplicity of the tutorial I'm going to be using stone bricks only and adding in the texture afterwards so whether you want to do that or add it in as you build it's entirely up to you but I'm just going to be using stone bricks for now and adding these in later as I said so for this six blocks here literally just fill them in as I've done there and we're just going to make an archway for this section spruce door down like that two spruce fences either side a spruce slab above the doorway and then two spruce trap doors either side of it. As for this three wide section here we're going to start with a stair in the middle and then we're just going to build up all of the blocks here on the side just until we reach the roof and then in the middle we're going to have three light grey stained glass panes and then just two more blocks above it. So there's our window we're then going to have a chain and a lantern just to the left of it and to the right of it we're going to make some shutters so we're going to start off by having two spruce fence gates on those two blocks and we're going to open them up like so so they should be facing towards the window and then we're just going to crouch as we do this and place down one two and three spruce trap doors and there we go we just got some shutters that in theory could close on the window Continuing to move on around here for this small section, we're going to start off with another stair in the center and then our window just above it and then just fill the rest in with our full blocks here, just like so. We can stick a lantern just underneath that block and then to the left of it here on this corner, we're going to make a bit of a log pile, which will obviously be the first of many. This is a lumberjack's house after all. So maybe we just have one, two and then three logs placed down something like that doesn't have to be exact and then just kind of rotating as we place some of these campfires down just so we get a bit of uh, variation with the rotation of them and then once we extinguish them kind of looks like a log pile consisting of 
of some different sized logs. For the five wide section around the back of the build, we're gonna copy what we have over here with the upside down barrels. So just place all of them in, except we're not gonna put in any spruce trap doors underneath it. We are instead gonna place in a line of stone blocks, three more on the two sides and three at the bottom, leaving us with this six block gap that we can fill in with our light gray stained glass panes. We can then come to the outside of the build and just at the front here in the middle, going to have three coarse dirt, cover the front up with spruce trap doors, two spruce fences or spruce stairs on the outside and then the spruce fences are going to go on top of the stairs. We're going to have two more stairs on top of them and then one, two and three slabs in the middle. This just makes a nice little flower bed, so of course you're going to need to put three different flowers to go inside of here or just anything that can be placed on coarse dirt. So berries, as an example, would fit quite well with this build. For this two wide section, very simply, we're just gonna fill in all six of these blocks with our stone blocks, and then we're just gonna add in one, two, and three barrels to make a small stack for some outside storage. And for the final side here, this three wide section, we're gonna start off with a stone stair in the center, and then we're gonna go up by one, two, three, excuse me llama <laughs> four and five and six blocks so all the way to the roof pretty much on both of the two sides we're then going to have one two and three of our glass panes and then just above it we're going to actually place in a slab this time with a full block on the top there so you should be able to get just a little bit of a window on that spot we're then going to punch this lamb out of the way because he is right where we need to place in a stone brick wall on both of the two sides, two spruce fences on top of them, and then we're going to have one and two spruce slabs with one more up by half a block in the center. So now you can head inside and start mixing in some of your different stone types, the cracked, the andesite, and the regular stone blocks. So just mix in as much of this or as little as you want. I'm going to try and keep stone brick as the main block, but just a little bit of the other three every now and again. Not too overwhelming, but enough so it makes it look a bit more interesting. But of course, just bear in mind, you do have some stairs on these two blocks as well as a slab. So maybe leave them be unless you have some andesite or stone slabs and stairs. But yeah, just basically mix a bunch of this in to whatever state you are happy with. And once you've got your texture added in, that is the main part of the exterior of the build all done. We are gonna come out here afterwards and add in a few more little bits and bobs to make it look even more like a lumberjack's house. But for right now, we're just gonna head inside and do some work here. So the first thing we're going to do here is just beside these barrels at the front of the house, we're going to add in one, two and three full spruce planks at the top just underneath those dark oak slabs. And then on the central block, we're going to add in two chains with a lantern just to get a little bit of light. And then what we're going to do just behind the chain here. So on these three blocks, we're gonna have some upside down stairs and then same again over on this side. And then we're gonna have three more just below it like that on both of these sides as well. We can then just go ahead and place down one, two, three, and four strip dark oak logs on that spot right there, just beside our window. And then on this spot, we're just gonna have some of our stone types. So whatever you wanna add in is entirely up to you. And then on these two blocks right here, we're just gonna add in some slab variations. So we should have something that looks like this. And then we can turn around and just add in two more stone types up here. We can then go ahead and move these four strip dark oak logs back by a block and place them here just like that so they should be in line with the ones over on this side. We can then go ahead and fill in all of these blocks with whatever we want to pick down once again just using your uh, stone variation something like that you may want to mix it up just so we don't have too many blocks next to each other. I'm very picky with this sort of thing but there we go <laughs> I'm happy with that. And what we can actually do is just break away these two blocks here. So from this log up by one and then over by two, go ahead and break them. And we just wanna make a little bit of a shelf. Now you're not gonna be able to put anything on this shelf, but it is gonna kind of look like you could. So we're just gonna have two upside down stairs like that. One facing forward and one curved round to the side, just so we have this little ledge that it looks like you could rest something on top of. Now we can go ahead and grab some more of our strip dark oak logs and we're gonna add in an additional two on top of that pillar. 
we can then add horizontally one two three and four along the top and then on the next row down we're just going to add in five blocks so it should look like this from behind we can then come back into this small area and from this block we're going to go down by four more vertically just to add in another pillar so we have a space of one and a space of three on the space of one we're going to be adding in a spruce door just to separate the working area out here from the living space behind it and we're just going to place in a full block with an upside down stair above it and on the three wide section here we're going to have three stairs at the bottom two iron bars in the middle and then just surround it all with some of our stone walls and of course then you can mix in your andesite stone and cracked as for the floor for this work area, we're going to go ahead and get rid of all of these blocks that I'm breaking right here. So starting in line with the two pillars, just go ahead and break all of the grass blocks or whatever is on the floor. Door is going to pop off, but that's absolutely fine. And now what I recommend doing is just filling it all in with some brick blocks or slabs if you want to save on some resources, just like that. And then we're just going to mix in a couple on the outside here. So something maybe a bit like that. We're basically trying to get a transition from the outside to the inside. So then maybe we can grab a couple of grass blocks and, and do the same in here. Something like that maybe. And then we're also going to mix in some polished granite, which once again looks a little bit different for me. And some regular granite. So just every now and again, replace some of the brick blocks with the granite blocks. Not going too overkill, but this is kind of just like a a muddier version of the brick and kind of giving off that feeling that the mud and the dirt has been traped inside because it is like an outside working area so you get some sort of a transition like that you may have to mess around with it until you get something that you're happy with and of course once you've done that you can go ahead and replace your door back where it was and now we're inside the actual home part of the butcher's house so what we're going to do here to begin with is place in the rest of our stone blocks that we need to of course you're going to be adding in the variation as you do this but just for simplicity sakes for me and you guys watching we need to add in that shape right there just to fill in that wall we're going to add three more at the top here and then three more just above the doorway and turn this one into an upside down stair so of course as you probably have guessed <laughs> just mix in your texture and don't just place in the normal blocks like i have there but yeah i'll do that after this clip what i'm gonna do in the rest of the clip though is go ahead and break all of the blocks left over on the floor of course the doorway has once again popped off but that is no problem and we're gonna fill it all in with just regular brick blocks or slabs this time not adding in the granite as a little bit of texture as that wouldn't really make sense this is probably going to be quite a clean area compared to the working area out here so we should have something looking like this now we're going to go ahead and grab some oak slabs and stairs and we're just going to come to this corner here to the left of our big window and we're going to place in an oak stair just like that and then we're going to add in one two and then three more just to get a staircase leading up so you'll be able to walk up like this but we need to add in some upside down ones on the back of it so one two three and four upside down stairs just like that and then we're also going to have a slab just in front of that upside down stair now you can go ahead and place in a line of oak slabs going all the way across from this side to the other same again just in front of it and then one two and three more and this pretty much makes a ceiling for the first floor and then a floor for the second floor which is going to be the bedroom yes it's a little bit cramped but i actually kind of like it i think it's nice and cozy or at least <laughs> it will be so the first thing we're going to do up here is place in an upside down barrel just on this spot right here to fill in the rest of this wall and then we can do a similar thing over here with a stone type doesn't matter which one it's entirely up to you we then need to grab some full spruce planks and just fill in a couple of spots the first one is going to be going right here just at the end of the staircase and then we're going to add in one two and three more just behind it like that we're then going to fill in this spot as well as this spot right here the next step for the upstairs area here is to just very simply add in a spruce slab underneath all of the dark oak blocks that you can see on the ceiling and there we go that basically completes all of the walls and the floors and the ceiling i am just going to get you to place in a spruce trap door under this block it's just going to make it look a little bit better <laughs> it's not really needed but i think it improves the look 
So now the first thing we're going to do up here is actually make a small little fireplace connecting to our chimney outside. So we're first of all going to place in an upside down brick stair from the center of that block and then two regular ones on the side. Now you may notice this one actually curves round and if you just have to uh, hop out here you may have to break some blocks but just replace it and you should be able to get it to curve round to the side just like that. So if we actually just hop back inside here you can see it looks the same as it did before. So it may do that, it may not, it just depends on the rotation of how you first placed it. But it can easily be fixed, as you just saw. So we're going to place in some four blocks underneath those two stairs, and then a campfire on this spot. And do not worry, it's not going to burn the house down, campfires don't work like that. But we are going to place in one, two, and then three spruce signs just in front of it to cover up our fireplace so you can't fall in. Not that you could anyway, but I think it makes it look as though you can't fall in. So for the rest of the decorations up here, the first thing we're going to do is place down two looms right here with two oak trap doors on top of them. Except we want the looms facing the other way so we can get the side texture. You won't have these four pixels, but they are virtually the same. They kind of look like drawers. So I'd recommend you break away these two oak slabs and get ready to replace them later. But just place down your looms like this so that when we go up to the top here, you can see the back texture instead of the front. And it kind of looks looks like a little drawer unit to hang some items or just store them in theory. Obviously you can't, it's a loom, <laughs> but we've got to use our imagination. So we got a nice little drawer set over here and then on this spot we're just going to place down a painting. Cycle through until you get something that you want. I think my snowy landscape here is quite nice. And then over here in the back corner, we're going to have our bed with a double chest beside it. And then optionally, you can place down an item frame with something to go inside of it. Maybe the lumberjack's first wooden axe. So that is the upstairs all done. We can now head down to the main living space. And the first thing we're going to do, just next to this iron bar on this block, we're going to place in a spruce slab and then two upside down spruce stairs either side of it to make a little table. We're going to stick an oak pressure plate in the center, maybe a plate, maybe some sort of writing desk, I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to have a lantern and then a flower pot just beside it like that. We're also going to stick a painting on this one spot right here, so you may have to uh, actually just kind of place some blocks around it so that we can get just the single painting like that and not a too wide one. But then we can turn around to this corner over here next to the log, have one and two bookshelves with a flower pot and something inside of on top. Over here in this small corner, just where we have our doorway, we're going to have a smoker underneath the glass pane with a barrel and then a crafting table just beside it, just to make a nice little cooking area, I'm imagining. We're going to stick a lantern on top of the crafting table and a trap door on the top of this block with a chest above it, just to serve as a shelf for some storage. We're going to have a spruce fence here on this block with a spruce stair just facing into it and a spruce pressure plate on top of the fence to make a nice little table for the lumberjack to sit down and eat his well-deserved meal. So the final addition to this room is going to be a table made with a piston. So we're going to go ahead and break this block right here just in front of our window as well as the one below it. And we're going to stick a lever down there, power it and then put our piston on top. So it extends like that and kind of looks like a table in my opinion. Of course you're going to want to go ahead and place a stone block there in replace of the dirt. That makes it look a little bit better. And on top of here maybe this is where the lumberjack can keep his best axe. So maybe something a bit better than the wooden one upstairs. I'm using diamond here as you can see. So now we can get started on the outside area here. And the first thing we're going to do is place down a stone cutter in front of the iron bars right here. This is going to be used to quote unquote cut up the logs. <laughs> we're going to demonstrate that in a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to place in some shelves using some spruce trap doors. The first two are going to go right here to hold a chest up. This can be used to maybe hold some items for all of the work done out here. And then we're just going to add a couple more here and here just for some more tools so using our imagination maybe the lever is some sort of hammer or saw perhaps i'm not entirely sure and then we're just going to stick a grindstone not sure what it's used for but hey 
kind of fits the theme. So we want to place in some logs so it looks like this stone cutter is splitting them and then putting the remains over here. So we're going to first of all place in a horizontal log next to the stone cutter and then just turn it into a bit of a log stack, something like that. And this is being processed into smaller logs using once again our campfires. So we're just going to stick one extinguish one there. Just put a barrel next to it with another one on top and extinguish once again. And then we're going to have a shelf on this spot right here, I believe, with once again another campfire extinguished like that. And the very final thing to add to the house itself is a small stack of logs over in this corner. I'm using dark oak, but of course you could use any type. It doesn't really matter all that much. But with that done... That is the house fully complete. All that's left to do for the tutorial is to add in a few little pieces around here just to make it feel even more like a lumberjack's house. And we are mainly going to be doing that by adding in some more log piles, except these are going to look a little bit different to the ones we've already made so far in this video. And I'm sure you would have seen this done before at some point in time if you played Minecraft for any length of time which uh, is basically just by adding in some horizontal logs let's say we go across by five blocks and then on the row next to it maybe just three and then over here we can go across by four for example and then on top if we just add in another three like that we get a small log pile of some timber that we can then add in a line of rails going all the way over from one side to the other and it kind of looks like some rope or something like that that's holding it in place. So I'm just going to add in a few variations of these, maybe using a mixture of spruce and possibly just oak. I don't really want to go too over the top with it. I think just having two different log types is going to be good enough. And with a few more log piles added in later, we are all done with the build. And as you can see, I've literally just added in one, two, three, and four more. But of course, if you've got maybe some more cleared out area, you can add in more than four. You can add in less. It's entirely up to you. It just depends on the area you're working with. Something I would recommend though, like I've actually done here, is just by planting a couple more spruce saplings or normal saplings, depending on where you've actually built the house, just to get yourself really surrounded by the woods and make it feel as though you are literally in the middle of a forest, which uh, yeah, definitely getting those sort of vibes from this house. <laughs> I really like how this one turned out and I hope you guys did too. Thank you ever so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it's helped you out and I will see you next time. Bye for now.